Um, all right. Sorry, I have to now do the entire setup again. But I will do it so you can't see my slides. It's, it's super secret. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Oops. <sighs> okay, how are you doing, QPilot Toronto? Can we do better? Yeah. Nice. Awesome. So are you excited for the next two days? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, me too, me too. Um, so this is my first time in Toronto. Beautiful place. A bit cold, I have to say. Um, and I am so happy that I get to be here and talk to all of you lovely folks. Give the very, very first talk, the talk that all other talks have to be compared to now. <laughs> and yeah, I get to be here on stage and share with you the things that I love. So um, yeah, you might be interested in who I am and what I love. Um, my name is Lian. I'm a developer advocate with Loft Labs. We provide building blocks for platform engineers. And I'm also the chief karaoke officer of Kuberoki, the first and only, and I have stickers, Kubernetes karaoke community. Yeah. So come by and grab some stickers and also talk to me if you want to go to karaoke later tonight. Um, and what I uh, love is to make developers happy. And if you're interested in you know, all the other thing, things that I do besides karaoke, you can follow me on the internet at LeonMakesThings or LeonMakesThings.dev. Uh, I'm on all the social media ex except TikTok, because I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so today, um, I want to share with you something that I've been working on, which is a documentary series called Jobs in the Wild with David Attenborough. Not really. But yeah, I want to share with you some of the stuff that the team over at Loft have been working on. So let's take a journey through the jungle of a thousand home offices. And with a bit of luck, we might discover one creature that is very elusive, just as elusive as it is revered the happy developer in its natural habitat. Just look at that joy, that excitement, that hope for the future. <laughs> An event like this only comes around once every 10 major OS releases or so. And I love this video so much. Look at him go. <laughs> look at him. This is the blueprint from Mark Zuckerberg. Developers are shouldering a lot of responsibilities. They um, build and maintain the services that make up a company's product. And even though a lot of people would say that the burden of this is to be shared by the entire group, with the advent of DevOps, to some degree, the burden has been um, pushed onto developers to keep the application alive and to make it better. But despite this hardship, a dedicated developer will always try to improve their working conditions, to experiment with patterns, with tools or platforms, just to help them you know, provide value. Over eons, developers have, been, um, have used archaic systems to assemble their development environments, the setup of which have been chiseled into magic tablets called bash scripts or make <laughs> files. These have been handed down over generations, from generation to generation, with new additions being made, while the reasoning and important parts some of them have been lost to history forever. But modern code archaeologists have, are now trying to find out how to decode these ancient texts to elicit their secrets. Here we see a group of junior developers. <laughs> they're inexperienced, they're unsure about Kubernetes, they're relying on the wisdom of their ancestors to invoke friendly spirits to guide their workday. But as much as these helper scripts and special configurations solve their specific problems, they introduce new ones, the growing complexity of the development environment setup. Here we see a developer struggling <laughs> with getting all their dependencies running on their local Kubernetes and, desktop, uh, and on Docker desktop setup. 
Watch him trying to spin up a second container. <laughs> With growing frustrations, over time developers become complacent, defeated, unmotivated. They develop imposter syndrome. <laughs> as they can't keep up with the ever-changing world of technology. And while they're being implicitly made responsible as the single owners of their applications, they just can't keep up with understanding what's new technology-wise, um, with their language, you know, but also keeping up to date with all the new Kubernetes releases. Bless you. But once in a while, the most curious of developers might frequent the local waterhole, mingling with diverse attendees from all over the world, working in different parts of the industry. And then if they're lucky enough, they might stumble upon a tool that could change their lives forever. Like our brand new tool, DevPod, <laughs> that just launched yesterday. It's GitHub code spaces, but it's open source, it's client only, and it runs everywhere, not just on Kubernetes. So DevPod manages the thing called workspaces, which are dev environments that run in containers. These workspaces hold all the source code and all the dev tools that one would need to be productive. All the developer would need is to define a dev container JSON, specifying how the workspace should look like. And the specification is developed by Microsoft. It's completely open. It's already being used by GitHub code spaces. And we believe it's here to stay, which is why we built DevPod around this standard. On the other side, the providers will take care of preparing any given environment. So that could be a Docker environment, that could be bare metal, that could be Kubernetes. Um, so you could run your dev container on it. And because the providers are interchangeable, you could spin up a workspace on your local machine first and then use it on an EKS cluster tomorrow if you need something beefier. DevPod ships with some of, uh, out of the box providers, but you could also build your own. It's pretty much simple line of bash or a binary. All they would need to do is to start up DevPod and it will initialize a provider, create a VM if necessary, spin up a dev container and launch and connect your IDE. And it's all automatically. So now begins the journey of learning and adopting a new developer tool. And for some that means locking themselves into a cocoon digesting their own insights and bones, <laughs> and isolating themselves from the rest of the world. And with a bit of luck, they will emerge as senior developers on, in no time. Let's leave them be for now and check in at a later time. <laughs> oh, this sounds not working great. Six months later. <laughs> So we're back in the deep jungle of a thousand home offices to revisit our developers. When we left them, they just learned to set up a dev container JSON and tried out a provider for Docker desktop. But today's developers seem unrecognizable from the anxious, inexperienced, and overextended people that we met last time, probably because these are different people. <laughs> they're well rested, they're confident, they're happy. And sometimes they will even crack a joke or two commenting on how unbelievably it is that they used to work like that. And so we leave the developer to their own devices, knowing that they are now able to focus on their actual job, but also knowing full well that life is circular and will always find a way to make software development over complex and dissatisfying again. <laughs> So thank you all for listening. Until the next time when we explore Jobs in the Wild, a 65-part series of capitalism's most interesting side effects. <laughs> and if you want to try DevPod out for yourself, go to devpod.sh, download the tool, uh, add some providers, launch your dev containers, and thank you so much for listening. Welcome to QPuddle. Come to me for stickers. Awesome. We need. Yes, we need. I, know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I think you can just come up. You can just come up. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs>